One thing in biology that's super cool is this thing. I mean, I get that it sounds nerdy, but it actually is super cool. And it's called the endosymbiotic theory. Endosymbiotic theory. And what's crazy about the cell, here's like your generic cell, right? And you know that the outer layer, the cell membrane is a double lipid bilayer. And everybody knows that, double lipid bilayer. Um, and the organelles on the inside have one layer, right? They also are, are covered in, in membranes, <coughs> these fatty membranes, these lipid membranes, but they're all one, like, you know, maybe this is a vacuole. Oh, you know, cool, here's your nucleus. I don't know why I drew it crooked, but it could be a perfect circle, but, right? So there's your nucleus with your DNA and all stuff floating around. Well, what's suspicious is that one organelle in particular, it's kind of usually like, looks like a potato, also has a double lipid bilayer. So that automatically is like suspicious. Why does the cell itself have two layers and all the organelles have one layer except for this one suspicious guy? And this is the mitochondria. And what they think is, even, even making it further, uh, the kind of like a suspicious character, it actually has its own DNA. So you don't find different organelles. You know, here's your ER. Let's see if I can draw this. Here's your endoplasmic reticulum and you know, all these other organelles. They don't have DNA, their own DNA. And the nucleus doesn't count because that's the DNA of the cell, right? Again, I'm pretty annoyed that I drew it that way. A little bit more circular. Uh, but then this like shady character just hanging out in the corner, and there's usually several of them, of the cell has its own DNA. It's mitochondrial DNA. And so because of these two facts, scientists think that he's actually like an invader. So, so this, this early, way back in like pre-caveman, way back pre, like basically the foundations of life, we had this, maybe it was a bacteria that invaded a eukaryotic cell and just started hanging out there. And usually the first thing you would do would be murder any invaders, kill them and remove them from the cell. But because the mitochondria produces so much energy, so much ATP, I think it might've been one of those deals where like, so picture like, you know, okay, it's like midnight and you're asleep with your family and all of a sudden there's a burglar and you hear some suspicious activity in the kitchen. And you know, you, you, know, you get out your like golf club and you're gonna defend your family. And when you get there, you find out the burglar is like doing some dishes. So maybe you're like, I'm definitely gonna hit him with this golf club. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him out eventually, but I'm gonna wait till he finishes the dishes. And then like, you know, he's done with the dishes and he starts sweeping and he's like cleaning out the fridge. Ultimately, you might decide that like, yes, he is a burglar and that's a problem. Honestly, like he's getting a lot done and I don't even mind that he's in the house anymore. So that's basically what happened with mitochondria in eukaryotic cells is they invaded, this is a theory, because we weren't there, right? But we assume they invaded, which is a problem, but they began producing energy for the cell and the cell made the determination, right? Instead of chopping this guy up and spitting him out, maybe we'll just let him spend a week here, maybe a month, maybe eternity. So that is the endosymbiotic theory. And again, it's based on those two fundamental characteristics, which is the double membrane of the mitochondria and that it has its own DNA. And it's pretty, um, I mean, let's just be honest for a second. That's pretty interesting, actually. And remember, if you're struggling with biology <coughs> at your local high school, you can pass this online at Silicon Valley High School and your credits will be transferred back to your school.